everybody doing today? Good. Good. After reviewing the Western Carolina game, uh, obviously we made some explosive plays in the game and did some really good things, had some players play really, really well. Uh, but it's sort of the same old, you know, uh, song with this game as any other game. You know, there were times when we didn't execute and do things like we'd like, which we ne definitely need to improve on. Uh, still made a few mental errors on defense that, you know, allowed them to make plays. And uh, these are the kind of things that you want to eliminate against good teams. So uh, we have a lot of work to do. Um, you know, I think, you know, this, this, the Iron Bowl is, you know, one of the great rivalries in college football. If you're a competitor, you love to play in games like, to, like this game this week and uh, playing against a really good team. Um, and, you know, maybe as it should be, you know, a lot comes down to this game. Um, it's kind of a season within a season, so to speak. Um, and I think if you have to explain that to your team or your players, they don't really know what's going on in football. So um, I think the key to the drill is great preparation, great practice, really doing a good job of preparing in the game because uh, we've seen all year long that you know, when we do that, we play well. When we don't, uh, we don't do as well. Uh, injuries uh, for our team, uh, a couple guys, uh, Ruggs and uh, Phil Mathis will start back to practice today and still be evaluated day to day. Uh, Raekwon is still day to day, and Will Reichert is still out as far as um, you know this game is concerned. You know, I think Auburn has an outstanding team. Um, you know, they have some very impressive wins over top ten teams, uh, top twenty teams. The only teams they've lost to is. You know, some teams that were ranked in the top 10. So uh, they've been very competitive and played really well, you know, in all those games. I think their defense is, you know, one of the best defensive teams in the country, probably anchored by, you know, two really good players up front. You know, Derek Brown and Marlon, you know, are both really, really good players and uh, have been difficult for people to block all season long. But they play great team defense. They play with a lot of toughness. Uh, you know, so this is going to be a real challenge, you know, for us. You know, offensively, they've been very effective uh, creating balance. I think Bo Nix has done a really good job of doing that for them. They're very effective running the football. They've got really good skill guys outside. Uh, they've got a really good runner. Whitlow's a really good runner. So uh, this team is very good on special teams. So, you know, this is, you know, the best team we've played probably so far this year, and it'll be the most challenging place uh, that we've played. So, real challenge for our players and our team. Hi, Coach. Good afternoon. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Uh, I'm here to do a story on Mac Jones. And I would love to have your perspective on, like, why is he built for this moment and this opportunity? Well, I, I think that, you know, we have a lot of confidence in Mac. He's played well when he's had the opportunity to play. And uh, I think the team has confidence in him. Um, this is going to be, you know, the first game he has to play on the road. So it'll be a little different, you know, from that standpoint for him in terms of game management, the things that he has to do to uh, be effective against a very good team. But we have every confidence that, you know, he'll be able to manage the game well and um, do what we need to do to be able to get the ball to the skilled players that we have and create balance in the offense. So I think he's confident. Um, because he's got some playing experience now, and we certainly have confidence in him. How has going against your number one defense so often every day in practice over the past couple of years prepared him for this moment? Well, I, I think that, you know, if you talk to most any of our players, you know, they, they always talk about the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of times people say, uh, you know, you're going to have to wait your turn to play at Alabama, even though we play more young players probably than anybody in the country. Um, especially this year with five guys starting and I think 19 freshmen playing. Uh, but if you talk to our players, you know, most of them will tell you, and I've never asked Mac this question, is the competition every day in practice is really what makes them better. Um, you know, Marlon Humphrey would tell you that I had to cover uh, Mari Cooper every day, you know, and Cam Robinson and say I'd have to block Jonathan Allen every day. So. Uh, I've never asked Mac the question, so I can't really answer it for him. Uh, but probably 
Uh, the skill guys that we have have improved because of the competition, and probably some of the guys that we have playing in the back end probably have improved because of the competition as well as the front seven. So um, hopefully that's been a, a real positive for Mac as well. I would assume so, but I think you should ask him. Auburn likes to run those the sugar huddles, the quick huddles. How do you prepare a team for that, and, and what do you tell the guys to look for? Well, I, I think you have to, you know, practice it obviously in practice, and you know, most of the time, um, you know, when they do that, they they have, you know, a particular different look that they want to give you that requires some form of adjustment. Uh, I think the players, you know, all have to stand in the sugar huddle on defense and definitely see how the players come out of the huddle. You know, a lot of times they'll be tackle over on balance or some unusual type formation, uh, and then they want to quick snap the ball so you have a minimal amount of time to, you know, get ready for it. So I think the only way you can prepare for it is do it in practice so the players can anticipate to some degree what they might see, uh, and that's that's what we'll need to do this week. You already mentioned their defensive linemen, but is, is this the best defensive line you've faced so far this year? And if so, what, what stands out most about them? Well, I don't think there's any question about it. I think these two guys are really hard to block. I think their whole front seven is really hard to block. Uh, they're very physical. They play tough. They play together. They're well coached. Kevin Steele does a great job you know, with them. Um, so they're tied together well. So you know, you're going to have to finish blocks. And um, we're going to have to play well together as a team to get a hat on a hat. and. Um, you know, same thing in the in the, the pass game. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a run or a pass. Those guys are pretty dominant players. So um, th this this is the most challenging front uh, that we've played this year. It, kind of a follow up on that. You, you've had some pretty dominant defensive tackles, defensive linemen here. What stands out about Derek Brown and, and how much of an impact? I mean, Florida game comes to mind that he's really had a huge impact on some of these games. Well, he's had a huge impact on just about every game, in my opinion. Um, you know, we've always thought a lot of him as a player and had a tremendous amount of respect for him. But, um, you know, he's got great initial quickness. He plays with a lot of power. He uses his hand as well. He can disengage from blockers very quickly. He can push the pocket, you know, really well with power rush. So uh, he's a pretty complete player. And uh, as good a player as we played against for a while around here as an inside player. How does your defense handle an offense that runs the ball a lot more than most teams like Ole Miss did and like Auburn probably will? Well, you know, I, I think that um, they create a lot of circumstances with formations and motions. And I think the big thing is, you know, we got to line up correctly. Uh, we got to adjust to these formations correctly. Uh, the players up front have to, you know, win their gap, win their responsibility, play well on the line of scrimmage. Uh, get off blocks, and um, you know they've got some really good play action passes to go with some of this stuff. So, back end people have to be in good run force position, but they also got to play run pass when it's their responsibility to do that. So you don't give up big plays, and um, you know it's it's very challenging. But um, you know that's that's the game that we play, and you know I think our guys look forward to you know trying to play. Uh, a physical game up front, and that's going to be a real key in this game. Yeah, Coach, the converse of that. Um, how has your running game improved over the last four or five games, and, and how do you run against a team that, that you don't necessarily see them bring the safeties up as much as some people? Well, uh, you, you know, I, I think that, A, I thought we were making a lot of progress in how we ran the ball. Uh, I thought last week we had uh, some issues and problems in blocking movements up front. Uh, they gave us some negative plays with some stunts and movements and things like that, which we definitely need to get corrected. Uh, but look, you know, we run the offense that we run. Uh, if they put extra guys in the box, which they do sometimes, um, you know, we either have to account for them or we have to throw the ball. And if they play split safeties, we got to be good enough to be able to finish blocks and um, be able to make it make positive running plays, whether they're direct runs or perimeter runs. So, um, uh, I mean, they got good players. That's why they have a good defense. They've got a sound scheme uh, in terms of how they execute it and how they play it. And when you play teams like that, the number one thing you have to do is execute yourself. So that's going to be the key for us. 
How much do you expect Tua to be around the team this week, and do you expect him to travel on Saturday to Auburn? Uh, you know, we expect Tua to do what he needs to do to, you know, get healthy himself. Um, we're trying to get him, you know, sort of back into school and doing what he needs to do in school. And, um, you know, he knows he's welcome around here anytime that uh, he feels up to it. Uh, I think it's always uplifting to the team uh, when he's around. Um, he's, I've talked before about his spirit and leadership having a positive impact on everybody around here. Uh, and, you know, certainly, you know, we'd love to see him as, as much as possible. But he's also got to feel up to it. You know, this guy's been through a lot here. Um, so, you know, we kind of leave that up to him. You touched on containing the running back a little bit, but when the quarterback is an important part of the running game like it is for Auburn, what's the most important aspect of containing that? Is it as simple as gap discipline, or, or what more is it? Is there to it? Well, I think any time the other team's quarterback can run, I mean, he can run in a lot of different situations. You know, they can spread you out and run quarterback draws based on the look that you're in. Uh, he's a good scrambler. Uh, he extends plays, you know, a lot in the passing game. Um, you know, they run some quarterback runs. Um, so I, I think that you have to play those plays, you know. Everybody's got to know who's squeezing, who's scraping, you know, and how you're playing those plays. And you've got to be disciplined in being able to do it or you're going to leave somebody um, unaccounted for. So um, we've played against all these plays before this year, so it's not like we haven't ever seen them before. I have two, if you will. Uh, first off, uh, DJ Dale, you, you didn't mention him, but he was questionable last week. Is is he kind of day-to-day like the rest of them? He's day-to-day. Okay, and then um, the last few games with Mac, you've seemed to start him off with some pop passes, some screens. Is that something you like to do with a more inexperienced quarterback, or what's the thought process behind kind of getting him started like that? Well, I think every every game, you know, we're always trying to, you know, script some plays in the beginning that we feel like are going to give, you know, all of our players, hopefully, success you know early in the game whether it's you know formation based or you know the kind of throws that we want to make early on in the game to sort of get people um, confidence and having positive plays so uh, we always try to do that we always try to go over what we're going to do we always try to review it with the players so they know exactly what to expect and hopefully that enhances your ability to execute Coach, I know you said to, to Mac, hey, man, you're not a sparring partner anymore. Here's the keys. You're driving this thing now. From your perspective as the leader of the program, what's the psychological shift that comes with that for a player and specifically for him? Well, I, I just think that, um, you know, you have to accept the responsibility and the role. You have to be confident in your ability in that role, and your body language has to – you know, sort of express that to the players that you're playing again with. Um, so uh, I think all three of those things are probably critical factors in being able to do that. Positive body language is really important. Uh, everybody's striving to be perfect. Nobody really can be. Somewhere along the line, you want to hit on exceptional. Um, and that, that, that's kind of what we try to get our players to do. But when it doesn't go the way you'd like for it to go, uh, we got to focus on the next play. We got to learn from that play, and I think that's really important for the quarterback not to get, you know, at all frustrated about the circumstance and continue to focus on the next play. And his teammates need to see that and have confidence in that ability, confidence in his ability to do that as well. All right, thank you.